I guess, you know, you never want to think. But in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, what if this is the last picture that I take of my son? Oh, my gosh. So every day I would take a picture of him. And so all the pictures and stuff like that, you know, once we finished, you know, through all the cancer treatments and everything else, with the grace of God, you know, he's doing excellent today. Yeah. And um, lots of miracles and prayers. And, How and old is Brock? Positively West Virginia is powered by BreezeLine high-speed fiber internet and sponsored by Highmark West Virginia, Freedom Key of Morgantown, Interaction Media, and Storymaker. With the help of these sponsors, we are able to share the positive business stories of West Virginians, including the one featured in today's episode. Well, folks, we're visiting today with Laura Yader. She's from Alma, West Virginia. Of course, that's in Tyler County, West Virginia. Laura, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to have you in the me. studio, all the way from Tyler County. Yes. And I look forward to discuss to, to discussing your entrepreneurial journey. You're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You're involved with so many things. But one of the things that I really want to learn about is Cancer Sucks. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the proof copy of your new book coming out this fall. Absolutely. It's almost done. And it is a journey of how to find strength, faith, and healing in the fight of cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've written this book kind of documenting your journey with your son, Brock Yeager. Correct. Tell us a little bit about this book and what you're on a mission to do right now. Well, um, I didn't start out with wanting to write a book. Yeah. Um, so whenever he was in hospital, that was, um, obviously I'm a professional photographer, so that was my way of coping through the storm, was yes. documenting, was taking pictures, you know, daily of of my son. Yeah, talk a little bit about his diagnosis and what that, uh, when that first happened and how you dealt with that first, you know, the news of that uh, diagnosis, if you will. Oh, wow. You never want to hear your your child has cancer. Right. I mean, that's the last words you imagine. ever want to yeah. hear. Um, I just remember that day. Um, wow. It just like hits you like a, you know, a ton of bricks. Mm. And um, it's just a story. It's a movie that you don't want to be in. You know, it's a silent movie. I remember the doctor coming in saying, your child has cancer. And I can see mm. his lips, the doctor's lips moving. But I, it was like I was in a silent movie. And all I can, I couldn't hear anything after cancer. And um, scary. all the motions and, you know, things that chatter in your mind and stuff like that go through your mind. And But the one that spoke the loudest was, you know what, God's going to get him through this. Mm. And then I just felt like a rush of peace coming over and me faith, after. I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what year was that? That was 2012. Okay. And so here you are, you're a professional photographer by training. Mm -hmm. That's what you do, right? Mm -hmm. It's one of yes. your, one of your main businesses. And, uh, you know, you're, you're not just a photographer, you're a highly acclaimed photographer as well. Back in 2014, you won a national award. What was that called? Um, it's the Grand Imaging Award for yeah. Professional Photographers of America. Yeah, the highest award you can get. Yes. Uh -huh. that's, that's incredible. So here you have your camera. Mm -hmm. uh, you have your son who, whom you love, and, and you've got this devastating news. Mm -hmm. You decide, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to document this. And now the culmination, along with your story mm -hmm. in text, is this beautiful pictor, pictorial book, picture book. I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing. It's it's gorgeous. That, you know, Thank I just you. saw it for the first time today. Um, you know, what what inspired you to to like say, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the, put a book out there it's called Cancer Socks? Well what motivated I, you to do that, <laughs> I guess. Um well that was what got me through, you know, the storm was to actually, yeah. you know, that was my way of journaling through the storm. Mm. You know, where, you know, a, a writer would be, you know, journaling every day and everything else. Documented My, I documented it through, through photography. Yeah. And unfortunately, in the back, one thing that, you know, I guess, you know, you never want to think. But in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, what if this is the last picture that I take of my son? Oh, my gosh. So every day I would take a picture of him. And so... 
all the pictures and stuff like that. You know, once we finished, you know, through all the cancer treatments and everything else, with the grace of God, you know, He's doing excellent today. Yeah. And um, lots of miracles and prayers and How and old things. is Brock now? He is um, going to be 27. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so great. going to be celebrating a birthday soon. Awesome. And um, so where was I going with this? <laughs> You were just talking about, you know, um, to take you know, it, any day. This could be the last picture. So you were taking pictures of him every day. Yeah. And so I um, wasn't thinking I wasn't going to do anything with it. Yeah. And then um, another storm hit after, you know, we finished his chemo treatments and everything else. We were home. And so I um, started, we went through a divorce. And so that was another storm, you know, that was in the family. And through that storm, that was how I coped with everything is I actually sat down and I made an album of his pictures. Mm. And so I took an entire week, closed out the world and sat down and just um, designed the album. And um, so that's how the album came about. Yeah. And you also have text in there. You, so you've written the story that kind of goes along with the photos. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, that was just done this past year. Okay. So um, I don't know. I just felt like I just had a nudge, you know, a God wink that it's time. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, when you have that uh, Holy Spirit uh, urging you on, you have to take action, yes. right? Yes. I mean, <laughs> that's the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. And so. With Cancer Sucks, the new book that's going to be coming out this fall, what's your hope with it? Um, my hope is to be able to help um, other families that are going through cancer. Yeah. Because um, it gives like life lessons that I've learned, yeah. you know, through the process. And then also um, just words of wisdom and encouragement throughout the book. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for doing that. Now, Brock had uh, received his treatment here in West mm -hmm. Virginia at WVU yes. Medicine uh -huh. Cancer Center. Yes. Cancer, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, talk a little bit about that experience. Uh, we we love WVU Medicine. They're one of our, <laughs> our, our, our people here at uh -huh. uh, Positively West Virginia. What? Mm -hmm. How was your experience there? Um, it was a wonderful experience. I mean, Dr. Paul, we couldn't have asked for a better yeah. oncologist. Yeah. And, um, you know, his staff and and everybody at WVU was absolutely amazing. Yeah. So with regard to photography, I, mm -hmm. I want to ask you this. What what is your typical shoot look like? Are you uh, are you a um a, a nature photographer? Do you photograph families? Talk a little bit about your what you're known for in mm -hmm. the photography world. Well, I love nature, but that's just not my, yeah. <laughs> I don't have the yeah. patience to sit and yeah. I love to watch a sunset, but I guess I just don't have the patience to actually sit and yeah. try to photograph something like that. Um, but my specialty is high school seniors and families and babies. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah, that's, that's special work. And uh, obviously the opportunity to be invited into somebody's home or to their life, right? Yes. It, that, that's, a, yes. that's a pretty cool feeling. And then, like I mentioned in, in the in the book, Cancer Sucks, it's a beautiful book. I mean, like I said, I've just I haven't had a chance to read it. Mm -hmm. Just looking through the photos, mm -hmm. you're an excellent photographer. Thank you. And so I think it's it's super cool, and I think you're uh, well on your way to to doing what you what you set out to do to offer some some inspiration, some some faith, some strength for families going through mm -hmm. cancer that have children going through cancer, especially. So. Laura, thank you for, for sharing that. We're going to talk more about your entrepreneurial journey. This is Positively West Virginia. We'll be right back. Your prescriptions are designed to keep you healthy, active, full of life. At Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield, we're making vital medicine more affordable. Because when your prescriptions don't cost an arm and a leg, you can use those limbs for something more meaningful. Because life. Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield, West Virginia. 
It's in the precision, the attention to detail, and the confidence that create a timeless look. Like Diamond Cuts Barbershop, Freedom Kia of Morgantown is not only committed to timeless design, but also fair pricing, excellent sales, and service with no hidden fees. Right now, current Kia owners save $2,750 on any in-stock 2024 Kia Sorento, wherever it is you're going. Arrive with confidence and arrive in style. Visit Freedom Kia today, right off exit 153 on I-79 in Morgantown. And we're back. We're visiting with Laura Yader. She's with, uh, she's an entrepreneur from <laughs> Alma, West Virginia and Tyler County. Laura, again, thanks for being on the show today. Uh, you and I met uh, through a mutual friend, uh, Tara St. Clair, who runs Ignite West Virginia, Ignite Absolutely. WV, through the Bridging Innovations event. Uh, it was mm -hmm. held in Huntington this year, and you competed in Ignite West Virginia. Uh-huh. And you did pretty well, right? You uh, you were you came out of there with some seed funding for yes. a new project. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about what you, what your entry into Ignite West Virginia was called. Um, it's called Battle Buddy Bears. Battle Buddy Bears. All right. Yes, and so um, it all stems from you know being in the hospital with my son and seeing how um, isolation affects and emotions affect children especially yeah. um, because children tend to shut down whenever they experience um, you know trauma and things like that sure. so this is going to be a teddy bear that will have a communication tool in it that will help them with their emotions and to be able to help um, the parents and also the healthcare workers to be able to know what they're feeling. Mm. So amazing. Yeah. Yes. So important, especially with, uh, with children who are in um, these cancer institutions, right? The mm -hmm. cancer hospitals yes. having treatment, whether it's chemo or, or mm -hmm. infusions or what have you, the battle buddy bears is a new product. So it's going to be something yes. that it will be able to, uh, it's like a teddy bear, but it's going to have an artificial intelligence component. As I understand mm -hmm. it, how, mm -hmm. how does that work? I can't say no, too much okay. about yeah. it yet. Trade secrets, so, I get yeah. that. Okay. But, um, it, but basically, it will be, it'll use AI, artificial yes. intelligence, uh -huh. and probably one of the most common childhood stuffed animals, a teddy bear, basically, right? right? Yes. So battle buddy mm -hmm. bears. Mm -hmm. So you went down to Huntington for mm -hmm. Ignite West Virginia. Tell us a little bit about your experience there. Oh, my goodness. It was wonderful. So that was my first um Business plan pitch, basically, yes. pitch competition. Yes. <laughs> and it was a wonderful experience. So, yeah. So, what was your category? Um, it was Main Street e commerce. Main Street e commerce. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, you have to pitch in a uh, Shark Tank like environment. Yes. Right. There's judges, yeah. there's a panel, and you have to mm -hmm. stand up and give your pitch. Give yes. us your 30 second pitch. What, what, what is Battle Buddy Bears all about? Um, it is a soft, cuddly companion teddy bear um, that will help with emotional um, feelings with children battling cancer and other medical conditions. Yeah, that's that's great. It's like one sentence. Perfect. <laughs> I love it. And no child fights alone. Yeah, that's great. So they've got a companion. Mm -hmm. And it uh, helps with their um, expression of emotion. I love the AI piece because that's everybody's talking mm -hmm. about artificial intelligence. Yes. And uh, these days, I think that's that's smart. So it's a teddy bear that's technology mm -hmm. also. There'll be an app with it as well. Very cool. Mm -hmm. I love that. Laura, what would you say is the thing that you're most excited about right now? You're you're doing photography. You've got this book coming out in the mm -hmm. fall. You've got Battle Buddy Bears. What's the thing you're most excited about right now? Uh, the book and Battle Buddy Bears. Yeah, so, two things. Yeah, yeah that's, I'm excited. That's great. So the the book publishing, um, are you? Do you have a publisher? Is it self published? How does that work? Um, it'll be self published. Yeah. Yes. Well, how mm -hmm. will you get the word out about it? Podcasts. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's great. <laughs> yes. All right. So. You grew up in West Virginia. You're from mm -hmm. Alma, West Virginia, yes. originally. Mm -hmm. Did you go to high school in Tyler County? I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have any, um, have you been doing photography your whole life, your whole career? 
No, I let's see. What's your journey look like? <laughs> um, let's see. I owned my own preschool. Um, okay. So that's amazing. Yeah. So I owned my own preschool. It was Tender Heart Preschool for about um, about eight years. Yeah. And then I, um, then the school system, you know, transitioned the preschool into the school systems. Yeah. And then I worked in the school system for about uh, about two years. And then finally I come home one day and I told my husband at the time, I said, I'm done, I quit today. And he says, what are you gonna do? And I said, I wanna be a photographer. <laughs> wow. So I studied for a complete year and you know, I was like a sponge, you know, just yeah. learning everything there is to know, lighting, yeah. posing, camera, you know, everything there is to know. And then after a year, um, finally being, ex you know, where I thought, okay, I'm ready for this. Yeah. Then I started, you know, op I opened up my photography business and then I started charging. Amazing. How, how did that feel when you first, like had your first paying customer? Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So. Did you ever have the, um, a lot of times, you, I hear of imposter syndrome where you're mm -hmm. taking photographs and you're like, people are actually paying for me to come in and document these images mm -hmm. of their family, their high school senior, right? Yes. Their newborn, whatever. Right. And you're like, oh my gosh, they're paying for me. What if they find out that I'm like, I've only been doing this a year. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have any of that? Well, it I wanted like to- like a common thread. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that I was ready before I was charged. Yeah. Because- um, there's so many people out there, I mean, in any business, mm. you know, they think that, you know, it's easy and just pick up a camera or any other equipment yeah, and then start charging. Yes. <laughs> um, in order to be really good at something, obviously you need to, you know, do lots of practice and, um, mm. you know, enhance your skill set. Yeah. Hone your craft. Exactly. Yeah. That's good. Well, that's, that's, that's awesome. Thank you for sh kind of sharing that journey. It's really fascinating to me, you know, uh, being an, an, a preschool educator, mm -hmm. now a photographer, now an author of a book, mm -hmm. um, creating a product. That's pretty cool, right? A technology yes. product, <laughs> yes. nonetheless. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, um, you know, in your journey of entrepreneurial, uh, like photography, let's just say mm -hmm. that, as a photographer, what's the like, what's the wildest thing you've ever had to shoot as a photographer? Like the thing that you go, you go wow, I can't believe I did that. Oh, um, there's so many. <laughs> um, but one I think um, was actually a competition print, yeah. and it was in at um, Moundsville Penitentiary. Yeah. So I. Um, put on Facebook, hey, needing a male model, you know, that is bodybuilder and everything else for a competition print. So this guy reached out to me and said, hey, you know, he sent me pictures and he said, hey, what do you think? And I said, yeah, perfect. So I said, can you meet me at um, the penitentiary in Moundsville and we'll do a photo session. So he meets me there and my assistant was there too. So we had the run of the whole entire penitentiary what? to take pictures in. How cool. And so I took him around to different locations and stuff. And Sparky was the, um, the, um, the electric, electric chair. chair. Yeah. Yes. And so I had that in the background and, and did different poses and everything else. So I went home and I composited into a um, competition print. And it was, I think it was, it's been many, many years ago. Um, I can't remember what the name of it was. I think it was Re Resolution or something. It was the name of it. So it was like a dead man walking type thing wow. to where um, he was in prison. And then he repented of his sins, basically, because I had the Bible in there as oh, well with the wow. cross coming up. Wow. And so it had like, hmm, there was probably a hundred and some pictures into this one picture. Wow. And that's what a composite was yeah, at that time. That's amazing. And so my, I remember, you know, when I made it, the my computer crashed many times because <laughs> there were so many layers in Photoshop. But um, that print actually scored a hundred in the national level. Wow, amazing! Yeah. Cool story. Thanks for sharing that. 
This is Positively West Virginia. We'll be right back. My name is Caitlin Furby. I'm an interior designer with Remarkable Interiors. Our time is very limited. We're trying to do everything we can possible to keep our clients' projects moving and rolling. So Storymaker has been really great for us for putting out how to explain our company. I can sit and agonize about a post. And is this right? Does this sound good? When I use Storymaker, it sounds so beautiful and it was so easy and it saves me a lot of time to do the things that I'm really good at. Stay connected with an unbeatable deal from BreezeLine. Get reliable, fiber-powered, 500 megabits internet for $39.99 per month with a $100 gift card and price lock guarantee, plus a free modem, free installation, and free Wi-Fi your way. Folks, you know, here at Interaction Media, we're a media company, and we rely on high-speed internet every single day to get our jobs done. That's why we use BreezeLine. It's affordable, it's fast, and they're awesome people as well. Learn more at BreezeLine.com. And we're back. We're visiting today with Laura Yader. She is an entrepreneur, a photographer, an author, and a, a creator of Battle Buddy Bears. Laura, in, in terms of like the biggest challenge you're facing right now, getting the book out there, getting Battle mm -hmm. Buddy Bears up and running, what's the biggest challenge you're facing right now? Um, the Battle Buddy Bears especially is something new that I obviously have not done yet. Create a product. So, a yeah, I'm creating yeah. a tangible product mm -hmm. um, to get it out there. And probably the um, the software development to, you know, put inside the bear is, you know, probably my biggest hurdle right at the moment. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Did you ever think you would be a tech entrepreneur? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's pretty cool, right? Yeah, Be able exactly. to do that and especially do it right here in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Technology is a very important sector in our economy. What's what's the vision you have long term for the book and Battle Buddy Bears? Well, for the bears, once the bears are completed and, you know, manufactured and everything, then um, I have a pilot program coming up with WVU Children's Hospital. I love it. Yeah. And so we're supposed to do a... Um, about an eight to 12 week pilot program with mm. them and, you know, get some positive feedback on yeah. how, you know, well it works with the children yeah. and the hospitals and things. Yeah, that's really cool. It's important mm. to, to uh, test the waters, right? Yes, that, absolutely. That, that's amazing. Now, do you have a manufacturer already lined up? How does that work? Mm, I've got a software company lined cool. up. Uh, yeah. That's, um, a, big, that's yes. a big part of it. Yeah. Like that's a big part of it. That's cool. Awesome. Now, you know, obviously you, you've been a leader in the community for a long time. You, you're an entrepreneur, you're doing mm -hmm. amazing uh, projects with this book, a uh, cancer sucks. And with Bi battle buddy bears as a leader in business, mm -hmm. what do you think is one of the most important attributes of a successful business leader today? Um, always help somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, cause as a, you know, entrepreneur, you know, there, there was always somebody helping me, yeah. you know, exceed and get to the next level. And so I want to turn around and help somebody else. Yeah. Pay it forward. Absolutely. That's, that's really cool. You, um, yeah, you, you strike a chord with me on that because I, I believe in uh, service above self. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm a Rotarian and uh, mm -hmm. that's one of, that's our motto. Service exactly. above self, and I, I do believe you know you you had mentioned um, scripture and and your faith and everything, mm -hmm. and that's a it's a biblical thing too. Absolutely, it's better to give than to receive. Absolutely, right? so that's pretty cool. Uh, what's one piece of advice you would give to somebody out there, maybe that has an idea, maybe that's gone through a storm in their life and they want to document mm -hmm. it in a book, mm -hmm. or they just want to start a business, they want to help somebody solve a problem, or provide comfort to a cancer patient? What's one piece of advice you would give them as they think about starting up a business? Just do it. <laughs> yes. Um, so after you go through a storm, you have um, a path. You know, you have a path mm -hmm. of either being a victim of your mm -hmm. circumstance or you have a path of serving mm -hmm. others that, you know, um, the path that you've walked on yourself mm. um, to helping them. Yeah. So. yeah, that's that's really powerful. As I'm listening to you say that, mm -hmm. um, 
kind of maybe thinking about a different way is um, life can happen to you, yes. victim, mm -hmm. or life can happen through you, yes. where you become a channel mm -hmm. for success or innovation or mm -hmm. solving a problem. Right. Right. Taking yes. your your challenge and creating something positive out of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and you don't, you know, whenever you go through the storm and you get to the other side, you don't necessarily have to create a prop, you know, a book or right. a product or anything else. Yeah. Just be service to somebody. Yeah. You know, it can be, mm. um, you know, a meal to somebody in need. It can yeah. be, you know, any. Any small task is huge to somebody yeah. that is going through the storm. Well, you know, like you said at the beginning of this interview, you didn't set out to write a book. No. You know, but you did. Right. And, and it's beautiful. Like I said, the, the photography, the photographic images <laughs> in this book are amazing. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, I'll, the, the text and the words that com accompany that are powerful as well. Even though I haven't read it, I've just kind of glanced through it and it's, uh -huh. it's, it's amazing. So uh, in the fall, when the book comes out, Cancer Sucks by uh -huh. Laura Yader, how can folks tap into that? How can they buy the book? Um, it'll definitely be on Amazon. Okay, great. Um, I'm not really sure the other avenues yet. Yeah. Once you are published, uh -huh. will you let us know and we'll help yes. you get the word out about Thank that? Because I think this is an amazing Absolutely. project. I th I'm, I'm very happy that you were able to take Brock's story and mm -hmm. create something that can help people with it. Oh, and he's you. doing well now. He's going to be 27. Absolutely. That's awesome. I think it's you know very good. Laura, we, we've covered a lot in our interview today. Uh -huh. Is there anything else you think our listeners should know about your story? Um, just have faith and yeah. God and have gratitude every day. Yeah. That's important, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I think the, you know, the, your, your attitude, if you have the attitude of gratitude, mm -hmm. right? Right. I know it's a, a cliche, but it is, it changes your, your life, your perspective. It you, does. Going from that victim to victor. Yes. So absolutely. that's really, that's really powerful. Laura, as we close out our time then, how can our listeners learn more about you and perhaps um, even get in touch with you? Is there an easy way for them to do that? Um, my personal Facebook page, uh, Laura Yader. Um, I don't have the websites up and running yet. Yeah, that's so, okay. It's coming. Yeah, it's, it's coming. Progress. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, we'll put links to that uh, okay. and your LinkedIn maybe too. At LinkedIn so as You well. and I are con yes. connected on LinkedIn. Uh -huh. uh, we'll put that up there. And folks want to reach out to you. That would be great. And again, uh, once the book is out, give us a link. Mm -hmm. And give us keep us updated on uh, Battle Buddy Bears, too. Okay. I'd like Absolutely. to help you get the word out on that as well. Well, thank you. That's going to be a nonprofit as oh, well. Is. Yes. Fantastic. You're mm -hmm. setting up like a separate entity. It'll be that. a separate entity, yes. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Once again, our guest today, Laura Yader. She is from Alma, West Virginia, all the way down in Tyler County, West Virginia. Uh, Laura, it's been great to have you on the show. Thank I enjoy you. Uh, what you're doing. I, I, I'm really, really touched by the whole story that how you got inspired to do the work that you're doing and, uh, and you're on a mission. And uh, we're just honored to be a part of that today to help tell your story. Well, thank you Keep so much. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. We'd like to thank our partners, Highmark West Virginia, Freedom Key of Morgantown, Interaction Media, Storymaker, and our studio sponsor, BreezeLine, for helping to share these positive stories. If you'd like to become a sponsor of the Positively West Virginia podcast, visit PositivelyWV.com slash sponsor. Folks, that's another uh, wrap on another episode of Positively West Virginia. If you or someone you know would be a great guest on the show, drop us a line on our website at PositivelyWV.com. And of course, we appreciate your comments, support, and encouragement along the way. On behalf of our entire Positively West Virginia team, including our producer today, Mr. Justin Schofield, behind the controls, I'm your host, Jim Matuga. Stay positive, West Virginia.